Hi everyone, good morning. This is Vittorio and it is very nice to be here with you. So today we are going to discuss MySQL performance tuning for Zapix. For all those people who do not know me already, I am a MySQL and Linux user since 2006 and since 2017, I have the pleasure to be working in Oracle for MySQL. Normally this meant a lot of travel, therefore for me a lot of fun, but well, lately not much travel, but still quite a lot of fun. So oh, today I want to speak with you about optimizing MySQL for Zabbix usage. And we will go mostly over uh, MySQL configuration optimization because we will leave the query optimization for the Zabbix team and their expertise about the product. So let's briefly speak about Zabbix and MySQL. What's the relation between them? Uh, Zabbix and MySQL goes without saying love each other. Half of the Zabbix installation is running on MySQL as far as I know, and uh, they are working quite well together. But Zabbix loves MySQL also in another meaning. As far as I understood working with the Zabbix team, it is quite a right intensive application. So how can we optimize the database usage and the database configuration for this kind of write intensive application, which reads from the database a lot, but also writes from the to the database quite a lot. So let's see how can we optimize MySQL configuration for working with Zabbix at the best. First of all, the one very important thing to be, it would be to balance the load on several hard drives. So we can dedicate a hard drive to the data directory and potentially to the InnoDB data files, then a hard drive to the um, Andula, InnoDB Andula logs. Additionally, we can dedicate a separate hard drive to the binary logs if we are working a lot with replication. So the key here is to split the load as much as possible across different hard drive, not to have mm, the not to have different operations fighting for resources. Uh, then we can jump straight into MySQL configuration. And one important thing would be to start from a current configuration and check who has changed this configuration, when the configuration changed, and so on. For example, the query which you can see here in the slide, it can help you a lot to understand who has changed the configuration. But the broader scope, it is to understand when the configuration is changing and to keep track of the changes. Now, let's see some of the MySQL key variables which we want to optimize in the configuration. First of all, the king of all of the optimization variables, the InnoDB buffer pool. So the InnoDB buffer pool, it is the main uh, parameter which MySQL uses in memory and allocates in memory, and it takes care of all the InnoDB caching which might be needed while executing queries. So a good rule says that these InnoDB buffer pool should be for production usage between 50 to 75% of the available memory on dedicated database server. <clears throat> Personally, I can say that for the majority of the systems, 50% of available memory, it is enough, especially because for um, database which 
um, where we see a lot of connections uh, or a lot of activities, there are um, other indicators which are occupying memory. So 50% it's a quite good, but still conservative parameter. But And how do we see if, if we need to allocate more memory for the InnoDP buffer pool? The query which you see here in the slide allows you to see the current usage in percentage of the InnoDB buffer pool. Uh, there are quite a lot of queries to monitor the InnoDB buffer pool. This is a very handy one which shows you the percentage. Binary logs. So, uh, as you might have understood if you are working with replication, binary logs require a special attention. Apart from having them onto a separate disk, uh, they should, we should size the binary logs properly uh, and set the proper expiration time for each log. So the default values, which are quite good, set the expiration time of the binary log to one month with the maximum size being set to one gigabyte. So we can have um, about, if we write one gigabyte per day, we can have about 30 logs file in the binary logs. Is this a good value? This is quite good, but consider checking the activities of your system and consider even increasing those. And additionally, consider increasing the expiration of the binary logs if you actually need to keep more data for operations like finding time recovery, for example. <clears throat> Sorry. And also for replication and to keep track of transactions, uh, consider using GTITs. In ODB redo logs. So this is yet another beast which we want to keep control of. And this um, is about the uh, in NoDB redo logs, so the logging which get the redo and undo logs, so the logs which gets written prior to flashing the data to disk. Uh, for pro the default value, it is very low. For production, consider use a minimum of 512 megabytes and maybe cons for a write intensive system, consider increasing the in ODP log files in group, which by default it keeps two files. Uh, and as we said, consider keeping also those logs in a separate disk, especially if the system it is write intensive. So com mm, connected to the in ODP redo and undo log discussion, there is the trading performance over consistency discussion, which represents the D in the ACID acronym, and it is indeed represented by the variable in ODP flash logs at TRX commit. So it basically says how often in ODP flashes the logs so to disk. Uh, what are the possibilities? This variable can have value zero, where transactions are written to redo logs one per second, then we can have one, which is the default value. Redo logs are written and flashed to disk at every transaction commit. So if you have auto commit enabled, this means pretty much every statement. If you don't, whenever a transaction finishes, the results are being uh, written and sent to disk. Uh, and there is two, where, which says that transactions are written to the logs at commit, but logs are being flushed once per second. Uh, the default value is one, but if the system it is write intensive, you might consider setting this to two. So you are going to keep redo logs at every commit, but data will be written to disk once per second. 
this is a very good compromise between data integrity and performance, and this is being used successfully in a quantity of setups where there are a lot of a lot of bright access to the disk. So mm, in this kind of write intensive system, this will be a big relief for the disk subsystem, allowing you to gain that extra performance. Table open cache and max connections. So now we enter into the cache discussions and we start from one parameter, which is called max connection, which sets the maximum number of connections that we want to accept in a MySQL server, and table open cache, which sets the value for the cache of open tables that we want to keep. So uh, this value is a, is a number. The default is 2,000, and it means that we can keep in memory uh, by default, 2,000 open tables. Beware per connection. So if you increase both values too much, well, you may easily run out of memory. So the number of, the global number of open tables in MySQL, it is the number of connections times the maximum number of tables per join. So this is related to the joins that uh, your database uh, that your database operates per connection. So having an insight in what Zabbix does and which queries executes can help you fine tune this parameter. Well, additionally, you can go by the rule of thumb, checking if the table open cache is being fooled. How do you do this? Uh, you check if the table open cache is being filled up, looking at the open tables global status, as you can see in the slide. Uh, so you can have a, you can have a rapid understanding of what is going on. Uh, additionally, if you are going to increase the table open cache and the max connections, check the open file limits in MySQL and the U limits, so the maximum number of open files in the operating system, because new connections are kept as open files in, in Linux operating systems, well, tables as well. So this is a parameter which you might want to fine tune as well. Uh, there are other buffers depending on max connections, so other buffers which are allocated per connection, which are the read buffer size, the join buffer size, the sort buffer size, uh, the net buffer length. So make sure the general suggestion it is make sure you reserve some memory for these buffers if you have many connections. So depending on how often you get connections to the Zabbix database, you might want to increase those parameters. Uh, a good way would be to monitor your database and to see how those buffers are being filled. In general, some extra memory would be good. So that is why I suggested you at the very beginning to reserve for the InnoDB buffer pool the 50% of the available memory so that you can have that spare 25% for extra buffers and potentially even more. <laughs> But there might be another solution. So um, there is a variable called for MySQL 8.0 called InnoDB dedicated server, which will automatically configure some InnoDB related variables like InnoDB buffer pool size, InnoDB log file size, InnoDB log files in group, and InnoDB flush method. 
Mm, I would allow this variable, it, and it is particularly interesting, especially because it configures the InnoDB flush method, which is something which has a dependency with the file system in a way. So, but beware that enabling this InnoDB dedicated server is not recommended if MySQL instance shares system resources with other applications because this enabling this variable, uh, we implicitly are saying that on our machine, we are running only MySQL. So um, this is the end of the discussion about configuration tuning. Uh, additional things which might be worth saying is that in the end, you have to uh, fine tune your configuration step by step. So you can start from the you know, DB buffer pool and max connections, for example, and table open cache from a core of three or four parameters and see how the performance improves or does not improve. And eventually you do further analysis and you go further to really fine-tune uh, your system up to your needs. In general, for the vast majority of the cases, a core of three, four, five parameters would be quite good for operating um, with Zapix. And if you tune those parameters, keeping in mind that we are uh, dealing with a write intensive applications, you can achieve quite good results, especially if you mm, separate the load, the resources at a hardware level or at a VM level, like saying that different uh, volumes are going to take from different physical disks. So what's next? Uh, as a conclusion, I would like to suggest some high-level performance tuning do's and don'ts, since this is a, a performance tuning 101 session. First of all, think and consider the whole stack together with the application. Additionally, what I said, think methodically, so define your objective, analyze, start from a core of variables which you want to fine-tune, and then check and eventually iterate. Uh, on the don'ts side, do not micromanage, do not optimize too much, do not optimize everything, and most important, do not take best practices as gospel truth, but try to check what makes sense for your particular environment. Having said this, that's all from my side. Thank you, and I hope to see you at the next session.